Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. We are in Dubai. I'm on a little holiday. We've come by to Dubai Mall to have a little walk through and a good chit chat. I've never done a bit like this before. I'm just going to chat in a way about everything I want to talk about, different things I've got written down um, to just see, you know, and have a chat and update things and, um, you know, what's going on. So let's go inside and take a look. We're in beautiful Dubai. It's hot and sunny and there's plenty of watches to see. I know they're not all going to be for sale but we're going to have a good look and I can show you around what's available and what's available to see. Um, I've been here already and it's, it's, there's some watches to see. There is definitely some watches to see but can we just appreciate the GT3 RS. Anyhow, let's go in and take a look. I'm, I'm not going to pause it. I'm just going to keep the camera rolling um, and we can have a chat um, about watches, about why I like them, what watches we can see at the same time. Um, you know, we'll have a look at the window as well, see what we can see, talk to you, what my thoughts and what I can see, etc. Uh, etc. Et I want to update you as well my collection. Um, just walking through the doors now. Uh, I want to update you on my collection and tell you what's going on, what's new, what's leaving, if anything has left, what I like to see, what I like to hear. Um, so, first of all, we're in the main hall area here. Let's just switch the camera around if I can. I think I can. Around for a second, we've got this new Rolex boutique here in Dubai Mall um, opening soon. But whether there'll be watches for sale is a, is a different matter. Um, so, let's have a look, right, uh, let's just know where I am, on here as well I've got some bits, so, first topic, I've written down a list of things I want to talk about in this video, um, and my first thing on the topic while I walk to the store is why I love watches, well you may ask that question. Um, the question was a very important question to me. Um, I just like them to be fair, it's a good investment. Um, the business I'm in, um, I run my own company, um, I don't really have a pension scheme. Um, so that's, that kind of, that's what I work for and you know, hopefully future, down the future line, um, they're going to help me out. Um, so we'll pause there, we've just arrived at the Patek Philip store so switch the camera around and we'll have a look see what's on the window all right actually we're at the Patek Philip in Dubai lovely ladies watch there lovely ladies watch got some diamonds around the outside um, let's see what else they've got another ladies piece uh, I'm not sure what that model that one is uh, but it's got uh, hours, minutes and seconds uh, with a diamond bezel and a leather car strap quite nice, not personally my personal favourite um, gondola uh, I'm not too um, strapped up with the um, the, women's, the women's pieces um, but let's have a look see what we've got here, this kind of looks quite nice can't really see what it might go, but that's quite nice. Patek Philippe. Obviously all PPs are very highly strung and beautiful looking. Ah, okay, travel watches. And um, this is like a, this looks like a world timer. Um, again, lots of diamonds on it, um, on a strap. Wouldn't say that's a men's watch though, personally. Right, what have we got here? Another gondola, again a ladies' piece. Um, not the best looking of watches I've ever seen, um, but yeah, might be for someone. Oh, here we go. This could be the first men's piece. Um, looks like a world tire, so the lighting's quite strong here. Hard to get on the camera. Yeah, not many nice men's pieces to show. 
not many people in the store either. Um, so that was Pathetic Philip, but also they um, have got a new store coming, so maybe that's going to bring some new pieces. Um, back to my first topic, why do I love watches? Um, obviously we've covered that. They're a great investment at the moment, there's no denying that. Um, and you know, I, they, they just keep me keep me working hard really. Um, it's like a journey, it's like a journey. Um, I'm very lucky to be offered some very, very beautiful pieces. Um, and, but I don't think my journey's finished. It's definitely not finished. I've got lots of pieces that I want to add to collection. Um, there's lots of pieces missing. Um, you know, I think for any watch collector, the Holy Grail is to get uh, offered the Daytona um, from an AD is where, is where I want to be, is where I want to work to. Right. So, let me just switch the camera around. We arrived at another watch store. I've been chatting a lot about, you know, my favorite watches. Please get in the comments and tell me your favorite watches and why. I love hearing other people's stories. Um, you've heard a lot of my stories today. Um, if you have any questions about them, any, any questions about, you know, where I started or anything like that, please get in the comments and let me know. Happy to always answer everyone's questions. Um, but yeah, this is, video's become a bit longer than I expected. But we're working our way around and like I said, get subscribed, get a light, and I'll chat to you in the comments. Hey, we are at oh, we are at Brocay, is the how you say it. Got three men's pieces here, got a couple of tourbillons. Um all right, we'll start from the left, what have we got here? Um it looks like no, it looks like a no, it's not a turbion. Maybe it is, maybe I'm not sure. I've never ever seen this watch brand in my life. Nor do I know what, what the watch is, but we can take a look anyway. Um, we've got one up there with a double a double um, hairspring. And also here, it's got a weird power reserve, I think, that one. But yeah, not too bad watches, quite like them. Not my personal cup of tea. Um, but definitely out there for someone. Right, so that's, we've hit a couple of stores. So we're just on the main floor at the moment. Let's, oh, here we go. Here, we've got some more down here. There's lots of watch shops here. A um, bit more familiar names coming up, which is cool. Okay, so back to the Daytonas. Everyone, everyone wants a Daytona. Uh, most people know um, that an AD will get one black one, one white one per year, and they've probably got a queue of 100 people. So it just determines on um, how lucky you are, how much you're gonna spend with the store, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I think my time will come. I think my time will come, maybe not next year, maybe a year after. Um, I stopped in at Terminal 5 Rolex um on the way here in in, in the airport um and the, the lady looked after me um she had a look at my profile and my spend was quite good so she claimed me as a very privileged customer so who knows some time could come um i know i know them type of decisions come from higher up on the director's board um so maybe i'll get picked one day but i'm young i'm 28 i've got plenty of years to go so i'm in no rush and i don't really want to force it um, so back to the Daytonas, um, I feel like my time will come, it's, 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 it's not far away I feel, I feel maybe um, within the next two years, um, it just depends, I've got my name down obviously at my, at my shops and hopefully um, I'll get the opportunity soon, I know that, I know that, you know, every AD they get one black one, one white one per year, um, so hopefully, you know, I'll get one and I know the directors make the call higher up in the hierarchy of the store so who knows um, and by the way wearing the bluesy on holiday perfect watch for all scenarios absolutely beautiful I've had so many people um, you know say comment on how nice this watch is and how holy grail it is beautiful watch all rounder couldn't be happier um, we just we've just arrived at Roger Debris um, so let's flip the camera um, and take a look. Okay, we're at Roger Debris. Um, yeah, quite quirky looking watches. I know they use, um, looks like they use lots of 
you know, um, high-tech materials like carbon um, and lightweight skeleton watches. Um, three different models in the window here. Um, they all look kind of similar, but all very different variants. Um, similar strap design, all different colours, um, all kind of skeleton watches. Um, but yeah, no, Roger Debris. I nearly bought a Roger Debris to be fair. Um, I do like them. They are quite unique. Unique looking. Um, okay, well while we're here, opposite um, to Roger to Roger Debris, we have the Richard Mill. So let's take a look. I know there's only one on display. Um, I am a big Richard Mill fan. A lot of people, you know, feel like they're hyped up, um, and I believe, you know, there is a lot of hype behind the brand. But you know, they do they do the things right. Here comes security. Might be get told off. Um, so excellent. Um, yeah, really nice watches. I like them. Hello. Are you okay? I'm good. Yes, please. This watch is not allowed to send us uh, a picture of It's what, sorry? It's not, you don't allow to take picture or photo. Ah, okay. No uh, worries. Uh, is this the only watch you've got in stock? Yeah, only for two for ladies and one. We have three watches so far. Three watches? Three watches. So this is only a ladies? Ladies, another one also inside. And one man for pocket watch for men. Pocket watch? Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. But hmm. you can come inside to check. No problem. Uh, ah. Yeah. I go to the, I go to the, I go, well, went to Richard Mill, had a look at the window, um, security guy came out and told me I'm not allowed to take videos, they invited me inside to have a look, got three watches for sale, um, two ladies, um, and while the third one's not a real, well, it's a stopwatch looking art piece, Richard Mill, um, but other than that, nothing for sale, but they must be selling some sort of watches, I kind of don't believe them, but that's okay, they do their thing. Um, I'm far away from buying a Richard Mill. Ah, okay. We have here Panerai. Panerai. I have a soft spot for Panerai, to be fair. Um, I've had a Panerai. Uh, have a, I've had a Panerai, um, you know, in my collection before. I had a Pam 3, uh, 389, which is very similar to the one there on the right. The submersible with a ceramic bezel, um, but the 47 mil. Question you might ask: Would I get another one? Mm, yes, I think I would get another one, but the price would have to be right. Um, I do like the, I do like the look. I like the clasp. I do like the, the way you know they, the way they are. Um, the thing I would get next would be a Carbotech version. Um, I do like them a lot. I'm going to come in and have a look, see if they have any. Let's have a look here. Oh, oh, here we go. I like this version. It's a Carbotech uh, Pam, I think it's a Pam 90, 908 or 905, something. It's a 907. I did have a look at it um, in the London store. Um, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Do you like a submersible? I have also here the rose gold version. Excuse me, what 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 Pam number is this one? It's nine seven nine. Oh, 979. I knew it was nine something. Carbon, yeah, yes. nice, very nice. Uh, what's the price on this one? Uh, seventy one five hundred dirhams. Seventy one five hundred dirhams. Nice, nineteen thousand. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Same price as home. Yeah. Okay, thank you. 19,500 US dollars. Uh, I think at home it was 17, 17 odd thousand. Well, that's quite unique. I think that Panerai are bringing out different models. Um, my father did have a Panerai as well. He's got one still. Um, he had a PAM 305, um, but we had a bit of an issue when it comes to the servicing. Um, there was a bit of a dispute 
um, we we knew the Panerai got got damaged throughout its service which we had um, and they come back with score marks on basically from where they lift the bezel off the watch um, they wanted to send it to Geneva to get fixed and it's gonna be on a six-month wait um, I'm not sure how it got resolved in the end um, but not great Lumina Marina Carbo Tech. I think if I ever got another Panerai, um, it, it'd be a Carbo Tech version. Um, I do like the carbon. I just love carbon from. Um, I love carbon from you know motor vehicles and F1 and bits and pieces. All right. So next to Panerai, we have um, Automate PK, mostly known as AP, and we've got a couple of here. But obviously they're all saying, all saying reserved which is let's have a quick look it's a woman's piece here with a diamond bezel half gold half rose um, men's here obviously got a royal oak offshore that's actually pretty sick stainless steel or white gold not sure um, beautiful rubber strap I like the dial um, yeah you know an AP is definitely on the horizon um, for future um, beautiful watches, great residual value, um, and definitely an up-and-coming brand. Um, we've got a ladies' one here, and this has got um, their new, I don't know if it's new, but it's their frosted, frosted look. Um, from what I can see with my eyes, it looks like it's like laser engraved or laser. Um, looks like it's kind of got lasered on it somehow to obviously get this frosted look. Mm. Do I like it? Yes and no. Not the most. Mm, not sure. Not sure. I think I'd just rather have it like a shine rather than a frosted look. Um, another offshore here. Uh, we've got the black black face uh, chronograph on the rubber strap. Not gonna lie. Nice watch. Chunky. I'm um, not sure how much they are. Probably 40, 50 grand. Probably. Um, Something I'd bring to collection in the future? Possibly, yes. I'd obviously have to liquidate some of my Rolexes. Um, but definitely something I would consider. But again, it would have to be um, it would have to be, you know, at retail. Um, don't really like paying over the odds. So we've hit the first few. Um, now walking up to Tudor. Um, I am after another Tudor actually. Um, I have my Black Bay 58 boutique edition. Um, my next one I really want to acquire is what I tried on the other day is the um, is the FXD or so let's take a look so here at Tudor obviously a great selection pretty much buy you can pretty much buy most models if you're after it um, there's a few in there which are waiting list uh, which are the Black Bay 58 boutique edition and also the new so the new, um, um, what's it called, sorry, the FXD, the Navy, um, Palagos, Palagos 42mm. I went into the store the other day and tried it on, um, but they wouldn't sell it to me. <laughs> I would have bought it, I reckon, if, um, if um, you know, but you've got to have purchase history with them. Obviously, I have purchase history, but not with the brand, but not with this particular store. Um, as you know, I've already got a Black Bay 58 boutique edition in the collection. Um, so I think maybe when I'm gonna get home, I'm gonna have a word and see if I can get my hands on that FXZ because it's made out of tit titanium. It's a 42 mil and comes on a Velcro or rubber strap and it felt good on the wrist, liked it light. Um, doesn't feel like you're wearing much to be honest, it's great. So, um, just arrived here at, at JC. So let's take a look. Just arrived at JC. Um, yeah, nice watches. Not particularly my my kind of flavour, um, but you know who knows in the future. I know people can change. Um, so, right, let me get we'll fit this kind of row is done. Um, let me have a quick look at my list. Okay, cool. Right, let's have a look. Let's go to the right next door. That's where we want to go. We all, that's you know, all watch people, we want to go to the right next door. So next thing on my question, on my channel, um, sorry, um, 
on my list of things to talk about is please subscribe to the channel. Um, I have been away for the last couple of weeks and there is a reason for that. Um, basically, you know, I found out that my, my, my AD is watching my videos, so I kind of put a spanner in the works for me. Um, had some thinking to do, had some, had some, you know, different things that I had to consider, just things what, what, what how I wanted to do and what I wanted to do, you know, to direct the channel to where I wanted to be. Um, and yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to jeopardise anything really. It was not which was my main concern. Um, I didn't really, um, yeah, I didn't want to jeopardise any, any any future plans with them. Um, so you know, I, put, I did put a little spanner in the works um, to see, you know, what was going on. Um, but if you're still here and watching, please get subscribed. We're on 300 and something. I want to hit a thousand um, as soon as I can, really. Um, you know, we, everyone has a passion for watches. I have a passion for watches, um, and yeah, I'm trying my best to to make some good videos, but also videos I want to kind of make. I don't want to get forced into doing anything that I don't really want to do you know I'm on holiday here I've come out to um, you know try and make a bit of a video um, could be by the pool but you know we want to keep, keep active but please get subscribed like this video and we've got plenty more to see okay um, we just need to find Louis Vuitton and then and then you'll be able to get to the Rolex store okay let's head this way um, so next thing I'm talking about, my actual collection. So what's in my collection at the moment? No, thank you. Um, what's in my actual collection? So start to finish, I've got two um, James Cameron Deep Seas. I've got a name is on my fingers. Bro. I've got two James Cameron Deep Seas. Um, I've got one 43 me Sil Dweller. Um, I've got my half gold bluesy. I've got half gold root beer. Um, I've got my pre-ceramic Pepsi, I've got my, a brand new 2021 Pepsi and Oyster, uh, I've got my Tudor Black Bay 58 and I've got um, a 2021 41mm non-day sub. Um, that is kind of my collection currently. Um, I've got a few, I've also got my DJ41. Uh, Azora Blue um, and that's kind of where I'm at at the minute you know it's quite a good collection there's only there's only a few pieces that I would consider selling but it, it, it only be sold if there's another it, an upgrade piece coming in um, that's where I'm at that's right so if I if I get another one which is a bit of me I, I would sell one to um, to you know be able to to justify it and also pay for it. Um, but watch that is a journey, you know, I'd really like to have a collection of watches, you've also got to be doing well in real life to be able to afford these pieces. Um, and you've got a big target and, and you've got to work hard, you know. Um, a lot of people don't understand that it, it, you know, for everyone, unless you're a millionaire, it's, it's, it's still a lot of cash to, to buy these things. and. Um, it takes hard work, it takes hard work, it takes commitment um, and you know, but I feel like the commitment is it's a good commitment for me because it keeps me hungry, it keeps me wanting to work harder, um, it keeps me looking and striving to be the best I can and also you know, it, 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 I want to I wanna get the pieces that I dreamt of um, and that's the type of things I want to do. Um, Right, we're walking here. I think the Rolex is around here. Um, so let's have a quick look. Let's get my bearings. Let's get my bearings. Okay. Next thing on the list. What age it started? <laughs> well, my um, my first interaction with a Rolex was when on my 21st birthday. I got one then um, from my father. My father bought me the pre-ceramic Pepsi on Oyster. 
Um, and it kind of started from there when I was 21. Um, I wasn't earning great money then. I was earning a mediocre wage. So buying these um, these type of pieces were, you know, kind of out of my reach a little bit. Um, these, this is the time where you can get a Hulk in the window and pay retail at six thousand pounds. But even still, then it was still it was still a tough time. And you know, I was still living at home then, um, and bits and pieces. And it, it was it was it was a tough thing to chew. Couldn't really afford it, so I kind of left it for a while. Uh, but my first interaction with a store when I was 21, um, 28 now, so that's seven years ago, and I don't feel I've done too badly. It's it's good, and it's nice that I'm getting to put now. Um, I'm working on my own relationships with my own shops. Um, so, um, like I said, my first Rolex um, was uh, a deep sea, but not the James Cameron, the plain black dial um, deep sea. Um, let's have one sec. Let's find out where the Rolex store is. Oh, I've done there. Um, had a deep sea, and at the time, that cost me eight. That cost me eight thousand and I'm trying to think now, eight thousand four hundred. I got a four hundred pound discount. 5% or something um, and that was that that was my dream watch at the time and, and that's how we rolled for a bit um, if you've seen my previous videos um, it did get stolen and then I was back to um, I was back to square one um, but at that time I um, I bought myself a property and I you know just sorted myself out a little bit beforehand um, but I'm glad I did that because I wouldn't be in the position that I am now but if I didn't um, so that was a good decision um, and then after that oh, I never think I got that one I got the first watch I got after that was pretty sure it was a James Cameron it was a James Cameron um, and you know it sounds silly I spoke to him a minute ago about my collection um, and you know you said two James Cameron's you think you're thinking Josh why the hell have you got two James Cameron's and I'll tell you why and it's because that um, it's, it's my favorite Rolex you know in terms of looks in terms of rarity in terms of um, my personal my personal dreams um, that was the first watch that I ever, that was on my dream list from day dot. And I've got good faith in that watch. And I feel that they've been out for a while, hasn't been much change. Um, but the day that gets discontinued, um, we're all going to be laughing. Um, but absolutely, you know, I know people say it's a big watch, it's chunky, but hands down, a stunning, stunning watch. Best watch, one of the best Rolexes out there. Um, and, and also, it was, it, was an OG, it was an OG watch in terms of before the trend, before the trend of this high demand era. Um, that was the one which was selling over list. The, you know, that and the steel Daytona from day dot has been selling over list. Um, I know they're not doing as well as other watches now, um, but you know, it's it's got a, it's got a soft spot. It's got a soft spot. Well, we've arrived at Jacob and Co. So let's take a look and see at these crazy watches. So we arrived at Jacob & Co. And I can tell you what, these watches are incredible. Um, I don't really know, I'm not going to lie, I don't really know what they are or how, how they show time or what. But just looking at them, if you're into your watches, these Jacob & Co's are incredible. I know Conor McGregor and all them, he has his round the world type of watches, um, but these are just as crazy. So there's one there, what looks like an engine of some sort, one looks like a rainbow. Um, yeah, they're all tourbillons and crazy amount of detail. There's one saying the Godfather. Um, the top one there looks like some sort of solar system. 
but these are absolutely incredible. I don't have a clue, these are well out of my range. Um, but these are real life, let's see if I get zoomed in on that one. Real life, there's stuff going in there which I would never know about. I would be amazed to know how much these are. I don't have a clue. These are incredible. Um, I actually might just, uh, I might just pop my head in and just see, just just for the channel, just for content. Let's see how much they are. Let me go in and ask. Well, guys, I went into Jacob and Co. Um, they were very welcoming, very nice. Um, I had a look at some of their watches um, Jacob produces and some of the watches they have produced in the past for their clients. Um, and absolutely amazing. Price range starts from about 25,000, 20 to 25,000 pounds up to infinite amount. But very nice to be welcomed and looked after. Um, Alexandra is um, who I spoke to. A very, very knowledgeable lady in her brand and very very pleasurable woman to speak to who had a lot of time for any of the customers so if you are into watches i'd recommend popping in and seeing her um, and always willing to help very very nice um, you know i know where i went to the richard mill they, they weren't very customer friendly unless you're a bloody millionaire um, but token co not anything wasn't a problem um, which is very nice um, well we're on the way to Rolex so let's take a look I heard there's nothing there but we can confirm um, let's have a quick one on the list before we get to Rolex um, my future Rolex the ones on my wish list so as you'd expect everyone's after the Daytona um, I'll hopefully next year I'd get an Oyster Perpetual 41 yellow, which I quite like. Um, and to be honest, I wouldn't mind, after having my bluesy, I wouldn't mind a stainless steel black date sub. Quite simple, quite elegant. Um, and that's the same I'm after. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, let's have a look at Rolex. I heard there's literally nothing here. There's a few ladies and date just men. Um, um, so let's go in and have a look. Um, I can see there's a lot of people buying some stuff. Fair enough, happy days. Um, but we'll take a look. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll have the camera inside or not. Um, but oh, this apparently is the biggest Rolex boutique in the world, as you're expecting to buy. Um, I've also got told that there is something called Watch Week here in Dubai. Um, I might register and go. It's five minutes down the road, apparently. Um, so I'm quite, I might just pop down there and have a quick look around, do a little video as well. Um, but yeah, fantastic. Um, right, so I'm just waiting in the queue at Rolex. Um, let me have a look, see what makes some noise. The Rolex event. I went to, I got invited to another Rolex event. Um, that was a new market and other race courses. We got hosted um, by my shop in Barry Um It was a fantastic night. Um, we had dinner and drinks and champagne looking over the new Rolex 2021 models. Um, that was you know, good to see some things and that was the first ever meteoric dial I've ever saw. Absolutely stunning. If you ever get a chance to buy a meteoric dial or have a look at a meteoric dial, I would recommend to do so. Oh, I think we'll be able to go in. Let's go into Rolex and have a look. Oh, that's Rolex. Um, free sale, watches for sale. Pretty pointless to be honest. Okay, right, let's have a look. Where can we go next? I'll knock some more things off my list. Let's have a look. Ah, so the watch event. Uh, yeah, we went to the New Market Races. We had some drinks, dinner, three quarts meal um, in the New Market Jockey Club. That was beautiful, thank you very much to them. Um, great, it was a great, um, yeah, great, great evening. Good to connect with some people. Um, I met some of the same people um, who we went to the golf event with um, and also we met some people, I met a young lad called Joe, similar age to me, similar interests, he's got a great watch collection, um, so we, we did connect up after the, after the, after the do, 
um, and we'll see. We'll um, hopefully meet up with him on a personal basis um, uh, soon. It's good to, you know, I like that. You know, we're similar age and, and there's not many people our age who we can talk to like that. Um, let's see if we can go in here. All oh, right. Um, yeah. And so, um, carrying on back to what I, my future Rolex is. Date sub is what I'm after. After having my bluesy, um, I just, I love the sub to be honest. My love for the subs getting ever greater and greater. Um, I have a non-date sub, um, but I just prefer a date sub. It's just the the cyclop lens just works for me. I know for some people they don't like it, um, but for me it just it just feels right. I like it. Um, Op forty one yellow. Uh, everyone wants a Daytona, of course. Um, Tudor wise, um, I actually saw that um, um, and the FXD um, Tudor is something that actually I'm going to try and get when I get get back home because I actually quite like it very nice watch mm, Brightly, we see Brightly want to have a look at some Brightly? let's have a look at some Brightly right my daily wear and why at the minute at the minute it's the bluesy the bluesy is taking the stage for the daily wearer um, it, just comfortable it's perfect for every condition. Look how beautiful that is. I've, let's, no one can... How beautiful. I have all my watches, um, but before I get into my watch experience, I want colour, we want variation. We want, you know, if you get a sub, sea dweller, deep sea, they've all got black, they're all black orientated. We want colour. That's why I'm after the OP41 so badly, because I think having a yellow one would just be stunning. It'd just be, that'd be unraised for the summer, that'd be perfect. And I just, I think if I've ever got one of them, um, I wouldn't be too much to the bluesy. But I, I like the bluesy. It's a perfect all rounder, is how I class the bluesy. Smart, sophisticated, but also casual. Very casual if you needed to be, and very smart if you wanted to be. Um, so if you're a guy looking for a watch, but you only want, want one, this is something I'd highly recommend. Right, we're at Brightling. Let's take a look at the watches. We've got some Brightlings here. I actually quite like that turquoise dial. Um, it's like a greeny, minty green. We've got a blue dial. And we've got a white dial, but it kind of looks like Mother of Pearl. Um, they're quite smart looking. Got some more watches here, Super Oceans. Yeah, my thoughts on Brightling. Brightling are nice watches. Um, would I buy one? I've had one before. I've had a, a, um, God, what are they called now? I had a Titanium B50. Um, I also had a yellow, uh, sea Wolf uh, on the bubble strap and a steel bracelet, um, which is very nice. But you know, we we got good discount on them at the time, and I was still struggling to get my money back. Um, but I know it's not all about that, and they were nice watches. But when you hit Rolex level, Brightlings and bits and pieces are. They, they just won't, won't get worn. They just don't get worn. You know, it's, it's just Rolex is such Rolex ticks every box for me, um, and I think that's why I think it ticks a lot of boxes for lots of people. Um, and I know it's a problem being having this demand issue, but to be honest, it's pretty fun. It's good. It's you know if i could go in and just buy every watch it'd be you'd tick it off in a month or two months if you had if you had the money to buy i think you know it's not it's something that you've got money money you know money can't buy you the watch that you're after it takes time it takes commitment it takes you know it takes time visiting the stores building relationships it's like a it's like a it's like a um it's like a journey like 
I know, I know every watch, but if they're all there available, they w- it wouldn't be a journey, would it? It'd just be like, you're just a customer. And it, and it feels good to be recognised for, you know, your relationship with the customer, because um, that's more important than anything now. It's all about relationship with dealers. If you've got a good relationship with dealers, you always be looked after. If you haven't, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to, um, to start. And, you know, I've been to London a few times, watch shopping and we walk into the Rolex store and they don't want to know because you're not one of their customers you know and they ask you where you're from like oh Ipswich or you know wherever um, and they're like well you know, go to your local AD is, is what the kind of vibe they get um, so yeah but obviously when I walk into the shops I'm known for, known at it's you feel like you're coming home you feel like you're seeing the sales representatives, but they're also friends. They're also, um, you know, people you, you want to see. You want to chat up. You want to, you want to, um, you know, chat with them, catch up with them. Um, and you know, when I go see some sale representatives for the first half now, we're not even talking about watches. We're talking about what we've been up to, holidays, what we've got booked, what we've been doing. You know, and and, and it's not. It's just like it's quite oh, incredible. Um, it looks nice. It's, it's a good place to be. Oh, this food looks good. So, there's some iron food. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to try it. quick look on the next list. And then I walk around. Dream watch. Well, I've said to myself on my 30th birthday. I'll be picking up something quite special. Um, it might not be special to everyone, but it'll be probably quite special to me. Um, it's going to be, I'm looking at something like, um, which is solid gold. Um, several options, to be honest. Well, not several. I've got my 41mm blue sub, yellow gold, rose gold um, GMT2, um, or Sky Dweller, or possibly an Oyster Flex um, Daytona. Um, but me personally, I need a bracelet. If I'm spending that type of money, I need a bracelet. So, it's kind of boiled down to GMT2 or um, the Submariner. Not sure which one, um, but you know, we'll see. It's a year and a bit away, so we've got plenty of time, plenty of time to decide and have a look and feel. Um, so yeah, but. I think guys we've covered the main the main um, um, the main shops here in Dubai Mall. Um, I have been waffling on but you know I've just been I think we've been chatting we've had a good chat. I've been chatting good sense. Um, but please get subscribed. I wanna know everything any questions that you have please get in the comments. Um, the comments are so important please smash the like button on this one. Um, it's a totally, completely different video to what I'd usually do. Um, and if it's a bit, if it's, if it's something you enjoyed, please, please show your support. Um, it's something, you know, the YouTube has been on pause, but I, I feel like I found my direction. Um, and I'm going to come back and we're going to make some good videos and good content. Um, so I can't, I can't, you know, ask for any more than that. Um, thank you very much and we'll see you on the next one.